Have you ever been asked the question, if you're stranded on a deserted island and could only bring one book, which book would you bring? If you're a good Christian, you'll say the Bible. Me, I'd rather bring this book, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Deserted Island Survival and Boat Building. But what if the question was, if you're stranded on a deserted island and could only bring your Bible or a good Christian friend, which one would you bring? Hmm. Given that choice, I think most of us would leave our Bibles right where they are. Uh, in our rooms somewhere, uh, under something. Does that mean that the Bible's not important? <laughs> like, no, it is. The Bible's totally important. <laughs> the Bible's crucial to our understanding of who God is and how we relate to Him. But did you know that Christians didn't have their own personal copy of the Bible until 1612? But do you know what they did have for hundreds and hundreds of years to help them grow in their faith? They had each other. The Bible calls that fellowship. You see, aside from God, our greatest need is for God's people. Let's be honest. If your mom said you didn't have to go to church for the rest of this year, would you go very regularly? Or if your small group leader decided to up and quit the ministry to pursue their lifelong dream of opening a Mediterranean deli somewhere, would you still meet as a group? I guess my question is, why are you here? Why do you come to this small group? And I'm willing to bet that one of the big reasons why you come is because of the people who are in it. You're gonna be graduating in a few months, so to help you stay motivated to look for your next fellowship group, in this session we're gonna review three basic reasons the Bible says fellowship is important for your spiritual success. But before we get started, take a look at the sheet entitled My Exit Strategy and fill out the top section about what are your plans for next fall. Then take a moment as a group and talk about what are you going to be doing next fall. The biblical picture of fellowship is to see yourself as a piece of a puzzle. Let's imagine this puzzle piece is you. When you look at it, you don't really know who you are and don't know what you're doing in the picture and you don't know who you're doing it with. And if we look closer, you see these parts that stick out? You know the technical term for this? The sticky outy parts. And this part where it sticks in? Right, the sticky any parts. You see, like this puzzle piece, you were designed to fit into the bigger picture of Christ's body and not be all by yourself. Guys, do you think your non-Christian friends will be able to help you in your struggle against sexual temptation? Nah. Gals, do you think your non-Christian girlfriends will have good advice for you as to whether you should get involved sexually while you're dating? I don't think so. Now, does that mean that we shouldn't have non-Christian friends because they're evil? Well, of course not. But if you want to have God's values reinforced in your life, then you need to be around God's people. Because remember, lions go after the ones who are all alone. So if Satan's strategy is to divide and conquer, then the smartest thing you can do is get involved with your next fellowship as soon as you can. The Bible has some really cool passages that tell us about how we should treat one another. So take some time as a small group and look at those passages up and discuss with each other what they say about fellowship. How many of you want to get married someday? Now, I know what's going through your head. Whoa, wait a minute, what are you thinking? I'm only a senior in high school. I'm not ready for love. I said someday, not next year. I bet most of you probably do. And I think that you would probably want to marry somebody who values Christ the way you do. Well, we marry the people we date and we date the people we're around. So, who will you surround yourself with? If marrying somebody who values Christ someday is important to you, where are you going to find those kinds of people? Now, I know eHarmony wants to tell us that love is just a few mouse clicks away, but I think that you will probably find your future spouse the old-fashioned way. You'll just bump into them somewhere. So if you wanted to bump into a cow, where would you hang out? In a barn, right? So if you want to bump into a Christian cow, where... 
well, you know what I mean. I know, I know. A fellowship group is supposed to be about God and the Bible and all that stuff. But hey, let's face it. It's a fantastic place to meet people, baby. Look, I'm not saying that the only reason to get involved in a fellowship is to find a spouse. God wants you in a fellowship group because you belong to the body of Christ, because you need to be encouraged, and because you need to serve. But I am saying that if you want to find someone to marry someday who values what God values about church, about family, and about marriage, well, you're probably not going to find that person in a bar. What do you think? Discuss as a group what you think about how being involved with a fellowship group will help shape you into becoming and finding the right kind of person for marriage someday. I know what you're thinking. Look, I don't need to go to a church or be involved in a fellowship group to meet with Jesus. I can meet with Jesus at any time, anywhere. In my room, drive my car, make a sandwich. And yes, you can meet with Jesus while you're making a sandwich, even a ham sandwich. But how often do you do that? And even if you're pretty good at meeting with Jesus regularly, guess what? You're all alone. Remember, the Bible says you're a piece of a puzzle and you're not meant to be all alone. One of the coolest things that Jesus said is that when two or more people are gathered together in his name, there he is in their midst. Sounds kind of freaky, doesn't it? Kind of like in Star Wars when Luke Skywalker will all of a sudden hear Ben Kenobi's voice like the first time he met Yoda. Remember that? Mm, yes! Too much anger in this one there is. Master, did I not have anger too? And Luke's like, Ben? Ben? It's kind of wild. Well, that's what happens when we gather with other Christians. Jesus shows up in a way that he doesn't show up when we meet with him all by ourselves. The Bible says that we, his body, are the visible expression of the invisible Christ. So when we get together with other Christians, it's almost as if Jesus himself is encouraging us and challenging us, motivating us, and accepting us. Remember, aside from God, our greatest need is for God's people. Because more than anything else, when we get together, Jesus shows up in a way that he doesn't when we're all by himself. There are verses in the Bible that tell us how to treat each other the way Jesus treats us. And when we do that, we experience Jesus on a whole different level than when we meet with Jesus all by ourselves. Take some time as a group and look at those verses and see what they say. If you don't want to be that lammy that's caught in the thicket, then you'll need to find your next fellowship group. Just remember that this fellowship group can be a great place to meet like-minded believers who can become friends. It's also a good place where you can experience the invisible Jesus through visible believers. And oh yeah, it's also a great place where a bloke can meet some nicely shaped puzzle pieces, if you know what I mean. In our next session, we're going to look at what are the ingredients that go into making up a good fellowship group.